Welcome, Tiffany Carrows, to Daniel Vincent Podcast. Thank you so much for having me. It's, it's just an honor to have you here for a full 60 minutes. That's just absolutely great. So <laughs> we'll, during this, this hour, we, we'll be touching subjects uh, on related to, to epilepsy. That sounds then, great. I'm looking okay. forward to it. Great. So I know you, you've suffered from the, uh, this condition. And mm -hmm. so have I. So now we get to relate. We get to, we get to share stories. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. that, that's great. Yes. So, uh, so I, I, uh, I'm told that, so I told that you're from Ohio. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. Okay. Wow. <laughs> so in Ohio, how is epilepsy, how is epilepsy, uh, looked at? Like, what does it look, how does it looked upon? Oh, you know, that's a great question. We have a wonderful facility in Cleveland, Ohio, the um, Cleveland Clinic, um, which mm -hmm. is where I attend for my care. Um, and so many people from all around the country, even all around the world, attend the, the Cleveland Clinic for their care. Um, and they have excellent physicians, uh, neurologic, uh, neur uh, neurologists, Mm -hmm. Excuse me, and epileptologists. Okay, wow, epileptologists. That's uh, this is a term that I've come across uh, actually just recently, uh, because I had never heard of this until I started doing these podcasts and uh, talking to different people from around the world who were were affected by by this condition, and all of a sudden mm -hmm. someone brought up the uh, the term, and I said, wow. So can you explain exactly what that is? Because it's not it does it's not everywhere that uh, people hear this. What's an epi what how is it called? Ep Epileptologist. Epileptologist. So what exactly is that? Well, you know, neurologist or neurologist, mm -hmm. that's a tongue twister. <laughs> 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 neurologist and epileptologist, you know, mm -hmm. they're kind of linked in the same way. They work together. Uh, in some capacity, but epileptologists, they mainly focus on yeah. epilepsy. That is their, um, their goal, their mission. Um, but uh, mainly they focus directly on epilepsy. Neur uh, neurologists, you know, they focus on the brain and different areas okay. of uh, issues, you know, dealing with the brain, not just epilepsy. Okay, so I know my, my father who, <clears throat> Who suffers from Parkinson's also deals with a neurologist. So a neurologist is a, is like a general a blanket covering the brain. Exactly. Exactly. Ep yes. Epileptologist will cover only one specific part. Exactly. Oh, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nice. Oh, wow. So uh, as we move forward, what's uh, how long have you had seizures for? I'm uh, going on my 13th year of living with epilepsy. Oh, how, if you don't mind me asking, how did this all start? Well, you know, I was 16 when I had my first seizure. Um, mm -hmm. They ran a lot of tests, but they couldn't figure out why I had had the seizure. So they placed me on medication. Um, and after a year, I, I had no seizure in that time period. So they took me off of medicine. Um, and everything was fine until I turned 22 and I had my second seizure. Oh. Um, and they ran more tests and still couldn't figure out why I was having seizures. And mm -hmm. um, that's just the way it is for, uh, I believe, 70% of people, um, seizures are uh, unknown. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. And I fit in that category. Yeah. <laughs> unknown. Yeah. Wow. That's, uh, that's, that's got to be rough. And especially that at 15 years old at such a tender age to start yeah. to, to, to have because you're, you're in your prime you're 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 ready to discover the world and all of a sudden this wow yeah I, I was 16 yeah 16 years old and just uh you know smack dab in uh the middle of my teenage years trying to figure out what it, uh what I wanted to do with my life and uh, just trying to discover who I was and um, 
It's a funny story. I was, uh, it was nighttime. I was getting ready to go to bed, uh, more worried about the test of my high school um, history test the next morning, mm -hmm. but I never got to take that test. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the, so the, did you end up uh, taking it afterwards? No. Not at all? Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> didn't have to do that <laughs> oh that's, that's all right uh, wow so uh, so right now what what is it like to live with seizures well everybody's different so i can't speak for everybody but for me i have complex partial seizures okay. and again for everybody you know i can't speak for everybody that's different mm -hmm. but for me um i have them every day Okay. Uh, some days are better than others. Um, on a good day, you know, I can have anywhere from five to 10 on a bad day, 15 or more. And what every this day? experience every day, wow. every day. <laughs> yes. huh. And what this entails is, is I will go blind in uh, my right eye. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm still able to hear and I'm still able to talk, but I just cannot see uh for about hmm, i'd say five ten seconds and i just right. have to wait until it passes but i also have a bit of head pressure too because oh, yeah? it hurts yeah that sounds, that sounds crazy <laughs> it is it really is because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow because I, I i also suffer from from uh, partial seizures do you so yes. what's it like for you oh a completely different experience Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. I, on, uh, I first feel get a feeling inside of me, and I know something's going on. Something's cool. Something's changing, and mm. all of a sudden, I I get a feeling of fear, paranoia. Oh, do you? Oh yeah. But, and oh, uh, wow. then all of a sudden, I get goosebumps on one side of my body. So one side only. I have felt and, that before. Seriously? I have. Goosebumps yeah, I'll or be... the paranoia? No, I feel uh, a bit of anxiety on the inside. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And like, I just can't breathe. Like my heart is racing. Oh, yes. And just, it's terrible. It's mm -hmm. terrible because I know that it's coming. And then that's when, you know, I'll go blind in the eye and, okay. you know, I'll feel that right. head pressure. And <laughs> yes. so, so, you know, it's, it's, it's actually, it's, it's coming around. I do. Okay. And <laughs> Are you able to control it in any way? Um, you know what I try to do because my body uh, wants to panic. That's just something that's out of my control. That's what my body does. But I try and just close my eyes, focus on my breathing, and I count backwards from 10. And usually that sometimes, not always, but that helps to make the seizure uh, dissipate faster. Wow. Where did you get that technique? I, I, I just decided to do it myself because I'm like, well, you know, if my body is trying to stress out, mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. not going to try and, you know, uh, further a, you know, uh, wow. a, you know, a, maybe possibly a grain mall seizure. So I'm going to try and just lower my stress level, lower my anxiety mm -hmm. with a breathing technique or Good. just, a, you know, wind down the stress. Right. right. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. And, and it works well you know i found it to sometimes it doesn't always work but sometimes it actually does work <laughs> all right so therefore if so it sounds like if it's something's going up going on up in your head mm -hmm. and you are on your own able to to tame it apparently like yeah like i said it was just a you know trial and error thing that i just decided to try myself right. to see if it worked and um just by chance it happened to work and i was like well this is great i'm gonna keep doing this wow and, yeah that's, that's cool is that yeah along uh, my own line i i've i figured out some my own devices which actually get rid of them completely i was going to ask you um what what kind of things have you learned um through uh, throughout my my years yeah uh, actually accidentally 
I stumbled on to uh, personal development. Oh, okay. Yeah. So personal, personal development actually is what is a good part of what cured my my own epilepsy. Mm, okay. Yes. Prior to that, like I was experiencing grand mal and or tonic clonic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like same. You know, it was just as absolute. Oh, you as well. Oh, okay. same thing. <laughs> oh. Wow. So yeah. So uh, so I, I was. Uh, it was. It was drastic. So I, I was eighteen when I got a surgery. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah, so I got a surgery for it, where they removed the whole right temporal lobe. Mm hmm. Yeah, I went in for testing for this. This is what I was uh, hoping to achieve, but apparently I am not a candidate for that. Oh. Um, but it's... you know that's okay. <laughs> mm hmm. Yeah. Wow. So the yeah the, so yeah I got a, the, the surgery at uh, eighteen years old and okay. what they were able to do was uh, get rid of my grand mal. That's fantastic. So the major seizures, so they were gone. That's fantastic. Yes, but at, and at the time I had no idea that what what I was experiencing was uh, you were just uh, speaking about the anxiety. Mm -hmm. That anxiety was actually what I I was experiencing, and discounting it as uh, as seizures, I didn't think that's what that's what it was. And just uh, in the past six or seven years is when. A, a neurologist from my area, uh, we were discussing it and he, he ended up telling me, he says, you know, these were actual seizures. What you're experiencing are seizures. And, that, but, uh, and what I figured out was that with my, the, with my personal development, hmm. so you mentioned stress. Yes. By counting backwards, your stress was, you were able to Reduce Bring it. it down. Yeah, Correct. reduce it. Mm -hmm. well, I found a system that would eliminate my stress completely. So okay. I, I have no more stress in my life. That's fantastic. Yeah. That, yes. <laughs> That's so and fantastic. I've created it. I've created yeah, absolutely. And I've created a triangle. So this huh. tri yeah. So this triangle consists of the very top, lower stress. Mm. The left bottom is my fitness and diet. That's great. Uh, yes, because I and the then the third part, the third corner, mm -hmm. it's sleep. I so much need my sleep. I need it. without eight hours of a day, mm -hmm. something drastic ha can happen. Yes, and I actually I, I experienced that uh, about two years ago. I started the gym and to, yeah. to get to the gym because I, I'm generally a fit guy. So I wanted to, and I was at the gym at 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. Each morning. Mm, okay. Yeah. So, it's, uh, so, but as I mentioned, I need my eight hours of sleep. I do too. I know what you mean. Mm -hmm. But prior to that, for those who know me on social media or all over the all over the world, uh, every morning I send out a post. I said so. It's it's an inspirational post. It's it's a uh, I put it out there. I create it and I send it out. Huh, nice. Uh, yes. So every single day, and I actually do four of those each day. So one at. One around five, yeah, one around five o'clock, another one at nine, nine, nine thirty, ten o'clock. Then I'll send another one around lunchtime. Then another one at four or five o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, that's so great. Yeah. So so that's what I do. Uh, but the, the the one I send out at five o'clock is is the, the the important one. Because and the reason why it's so important is because it starts off my day. Mm -hmm. By writing it down. By physically thinking about it and putting it down on paper, mm -hmm. I I now have it engraved in my head, and that's how oh, I start yeah. off my day. But then back, sorry, I digressed here a little bit. <laughs> but then back to the the gym. So I go to the gym, and I'd come back. At, then later on, at, uh, I'd go. To, I'd have to go to bed at eight. 
p.m. Mm-hmm. eight at night and get up at four, four a.m. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't always happening, and all of a sudden, I found myself at around two at three o'clock in the morning, sleeping uh-huh. and waking and waking up, terrified, uh-huh. feeling then this terror. If I can explain it, uh, let's just say let's just say I put you in a cage with a lion. Close oh gosh! And you know, it's just a matter of time yeah. before things are ended. Yeah. Now, the scenario oh, has nothing to do with the fear. Yeah. What the fear I was experiencing was at that level. Paranoid. Oh, Nobody could touch me. No. Nope. And mm-hmm. but, however, and however, I didn't want to be alone. But yet, I, I did want to be alone. So mm-hmm. it's, it, it's so it's 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 really, really strange. But I woke up that morning, 2 a.m., and I said, okay, what's going on here? Because those, those feelings had gone for, for quite some time. Yeah. For wow. Years. Yeah. So, and all of a sudden, I said, I look back. I said, okay, I know what's going on. It's my sleep. So I wasn't getting my eight hours anymore. Mm-hmm. Two weeks later, I was back on track. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. So it's, it's crazy. That's so, the, so important for people like us. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> on your part, so I, th- I found my, I found my triangle, which is actually a good thing for everyone. When you found your way to do, oh, to, yeah. to get that done. That's awesome stuff, Tiffany. That's, mm. that's cool. So, so in your case, do you have any auras? I do actually. Oh, yeah? Yes, I do. Um, I don't always experience them, but uh, yes, when I do, um, I'm actually thankful for them because that gives me um, the opportunity to get to a safe space um, because uh, luckily I am so thankful. I have not experienced a grand mal seizure in over six months. Um, I know, I know, (laughs) but uh, I don't like to take the chance. Uh, so when I do experience uh, an aura, which uh, for me, usually I will uh, have that metallic taste in my mouth mm-hmm. or I'll have like a burning sensation in my nose. Oh. And yeah, like a, I, don't, I would say like, you know, um, burning like a smoky smell or even just like a bubbles, like bubbles, mm-hmm. soapy in it. So um that lets me know that a seizure is coming. So I'll get to a safe space like the couch or the bed, or just I'll just sit down on the floor immediately if I have to. Right. Just uh, whatever I have to do just to make sure that I'm not going to get hurt. Okay. Wow. So what's what's an aura? Well, an aura is, uh, again, something um, that gives you uh, a heads up or a warning that a seizure uh, is about to occur. And that can be uh, something that you uh, see visually, mm-hmm. or you taste, or you smell. Okay. And that lets you know, you okay. know, that you, a seizure is approaching. Oh, wow. Okay, so it's a warning sign. It is the warning sign, you All know, right. and yeah, a, a lot of times that's, you know, something, you know, to be thankful for it's not a pleasant experience but it's Mm -hmm. a good thing you know because that way you can get yourself to a safe space or you can let someone know so that they can help you no no for sure that says it's so crucial yeah if you you have a warning like that that could be that that could be a lifesaver yeah definitely for sure for sure so how do you so as you go through your your auras as i uh the, the auras that you, you mentioned, do you experience all these little things like the taste, the, uh, the smell? Um, there have been times where I've experienced all of them uh, at once. Sometimes mm-hmm. I've experienced just one of them. Mm-hmm. And uh, sometimes I've experienced them one at a time. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. I- I can never tell just you know uh, seizures are unpredictable the auras are unpredictable mm-hmm. you can just never tell how they're gonna really you know pay a visit to you so 
<laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a that's a nice way of putting this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I like that. <laughs> uh, well, so so with all this crazy stuff, how do you cope, Tiffany? Well, you know, uh, one thing uh, for certain is support, and I have amazing support from my spouse, of course, and my family, mm -hmm. and definitely the epilepsy and chronic illness community. They wow. have been so amazing in lifting me up with, uh, you know, letting me know that they're there for me, that mm -hmm. I can talk to them and uh, ask them questions if I have any questions. And we, we can uh, share with one another how we're feeling. For sure. It's so crucial to have a, a support system out there. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you just mentioned family so you yes. have a support you have a supportive family too as well i do yes i do good. that's good because you're you're actually lucky for that because i, I uh, a lot of people whom i've spoken i've spoken with didn't have that i know and it, my heart yeah. breaks for you know oh, individuals know. Who... for sure yes because it's a, it can be so uh, catastrophic for so many people I know. And, yes, and I've I had a, a semi supportive family. My 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 folks, my parents were supportive. My siblings not as much. They were younger. Mm -hmm. Yes, because I I grew up with epilepsy. I had epilepsy since I was maybe a month old. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. You've had yeah. quite the journey. Oh, I, I've I've experienced a few things throughout there <laughs> throughout throughout these these decades. <laughs> for sure so it's a yeah and uh, there are times where there's, where there's this that stigma that's out there that's it that and even my my own siblings we call it my brothers telling my telling my dad because dad he told he told dad to come shovel with me and he's look at him he's faking it Oh, I or, or things like that, right? Terrible. From my sister, Dad, Dad's not helping me with the dishes. Mom, look at him. Oh, I, yeah. I that's so terrible. Yeah, it, know. You know, I've had I've had friends um, in the past in the beginning beginning of my journey where they've seen me uh, well. I would have a period of uh, seizure freedom, and I would mm -hmm. have the freedom to do things that I enjoy, and they right. would assume that I was either faking it or well, you know, that I'd been healed. And right. it's like, you know, I wish that'd be nice. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yes, because it's it, because we're, we're, as, uh, in essence, we're just things are we're just like anyone else. Mm -hmm. However, once in a while, there can be a glitch in the system. Yeah. And I, I I'll put it out as this here. You, it could be like a an electrical grid around the world, where all yeah. this can, there there are trillions and trillions of connections everywhere, and all of a sudden, connections can sort of touch another one. So go from here to here, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that will create a short in the system, and all of a sudden, some something happens. Yeah, that's and, right. Which explains your your smell. The grand mal seizures are shaking on the ground. In mm -hmm. my case. That's yeah. right. So it's <laughs> which is which is what is it's just crazy. So it uh, sure is. <laughs> so yes. So why do you think, Tiffany, that so many people, so many around the world do not understand epilepsy, do not understand our condition? Well, I believe the thing of it is, is that, you know, we're doing really good uh, with advocacy and raising awareness, but um, we, we need to amplify uh, awareness more and we need more people to help us to get the awareness out there. We need more people to help us, you know, uh, help us get our voice out there. Sure. Um, I see a lot of other uh, chronic illnesses uh, getting the opportunity to 
uh, share their voices in different mm -hmm. platforms. And this is what we need to help people so, understand. Right. <laughs> but but in, in our case, in a case with epilepsy, there are so many, so many of us who are afraid to share, who are afraid to say yes. anything. And mm -hmm. would you agree with me that that could possibly be one of the reasons why it's not so no, so well known around the world? Absolutely. I've actually had um, a friend who uh, um, came to me and let me know this uh, herself that she was afraid because uh, she didn't want to be looked at as weird or mm -hmm. she didn't want to uh, lose her job. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted, you know, to really express to her that, you know, by keeping this under wraps, it's only, you know, making it worse for her because um you know she's a beautiful person mm -hmm. and she's letting epilepsy have the win oh. if she's you know if she keeps that under wraps and her voice mm -hmm. matters oh, you know our absolutely. voices matter and not oh, only yeah. are we helping somebody we could be helping tons of people by mm -hmm. telling our story mm -hmm. you know uh we're empowering ourselves yes what you just mentioned about the voice mattering. I actually I put out a, a quote a while back. It says, for those of you who don't who think your voice does not, not matter, and I, I, I put out a question. I asked, have you ever been at, in a tent in the summertime with one single mosquito? Did that mosquito matter? <laughs> <laughs> so if you think you're, if that mosquito matters, why would your voice matter? <laughs> Oh my goodness. No, yeah. you know, every, every little thing, every, even the tiniest thing matters, even the tiniest little thing matters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, no, for sure. Yes. So, yeah, so that's uh, maybe in time with, with the movements that are happening right now around the world, things are starting to move and people are starting to, are actually starting to think differently. Yes. Mm -hmm. To be open. Mm -hmm. And by what we're doing now, which is the reason, this is actually the reason I'm doing this to make, to get people to uh, more educated and be, uh, be okay with speaking their voice. Yeah. Yes. And which is why I, I just thank you so much for jumping on here, just in a, in a whim. Cool. That's oh. really, that's awesome. It's fantastic and it's a pleasure because I'm definitely seeing uh, an increase in uh, raising awareness, talking about their story, sharing their story. And this is definitely what we need mm -hmm. to really further awareness. And I love yes. it. For sure. So uh, have you ever felt that your confidence was being attacked or you, were, you, you could be more confident that you actually were? Was there a period of time? In your time that you felt that way in the beginning of my journey uh i would mm -hmm. have said yes i would have said so um oh, yes. mm -hmm, definitely because uh i didn't feel sure of myself or i didn't know who i was at that point mm -hmm. because um <laughs> i didn't know which direction to go mm -hmm. you know i was scared i was lonely and um i didn't really know much about you know epilepsy at that time so mm -hmm. I was, um, I was a newbie. I was a, a baby learning uh -huh. about, about no, life. Sure. Yeah. Learning about my life, a new life, you yeah. know, so. So it was a, a brand new journey for you. A brand new journey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. And so I had to build, uh, build a brand new, much stronger, more solid confidence. Right. Well, the so having so the confidence so if your confidence was lower uh how what was your outlook on life like how did you how did you visualize life itself in, in general um in the beginning um mm -hmm. i felt i at that time i had to quit work because i just couldn't hold a job i was having way too many seizures okay. um I couldn't drive. I, I had to put a lot of things aside because I was needing to focus more on my health. Mm -hmm. So at that time, I was uh, looking at my life and it seemed very bleak to me. I didn't know 
um, how I was going to be uh, supportive uh, in my family, to my family. Mm. And <laughs> I really felt guilty and uh, I didn't know how I was going to be able to be a supportive uh, uh, part of society. Mm -hmm. So that was that was tough for me for a while. I, I had to go through about a depression. Um, oh. But then that's when I really decided to, you know, talk about my feelings through blogging and really opening up. And that really, really uh, opened up a door of confidence mm -hmm. for me. Okay. Wow. So you, you use social media to, to help you. Yes. Right. Yeah. Wow. Mm hmm. Huh. huh. Yeah. Have, because have ever, I just. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I said, I just realized because I've always had a love for writing. And I didn't realize, you know, that I could use writing as a way to reach people. Mm hmm. Yes. So you blog a lot. I do. Oh, yes. I do very much. So. Okay. Yeah. I mean, um, I don't have a schedule that I write when I feel as though I have uh, something that I want to say. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you, so it, it's, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been subjected to condescending? Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh, you have? Yeah. You, yeah. Do you, do you um, want to share some experiences? Well, um, again, uh, I can't, of course, uh, I don't want to name names, but I've had, you know, uh, certain family members and friends, you know, when I've had good streaks uh, and mm -hmm. I do things that I love and I've mm -hmm. been accused of faking my seizures, right. um, which is not which is not, you know, a pleasant thing to experience because that mm -hmm. really makes you feel bad for mm -hmm. wanting to do things, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. um, and it makes you feel like you have to explain yourself and you don't need to explain yourself. That's, That's the right. one thing to know that, you know, you owe no explanation to anybody for uh, doing things that you love, even though you have epilepsy. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was, uh, I, I, I found myself having to explain myself in many, in many occasions. Mm -hmm. And actually did, even at times when uh, I recall my, uh, my siblings or family members would ask me to do something. Mm -hmm. But I was so embedded in the, into the fact that I, I felt that I was worthless and that there's nothing I could accomplish. Everything, everything I would do would fail. But that, yeah. but that was ingrained in my head. And I, I did it. It was so bad that every now and again, when someone would ask me to do something and I tell them I couldn't do it, I'd go out and do it to prove them, prove to them that, that I was right, that I couldn't mm -hmm. do it. And uh -huh. you, if you start off that way, you you already know what the ending is going to, going to be like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I failed every time, and I had I and weird enough, I gained gratitude oh. from those from those moments. So oh, it, which, well. which which from the worst part, which is actually which is not so good, because gaining gratitude from show so showing someone that I was right that I couldn't do it. <laughs> so. With the, so showing getting gratitude from the worst possible ways. Yeah. Yes. It, mm -hmm. It's amazing how sometimes we learn things uh, in in the craziest or most difficult situations. Uh huh. No, oh, for sure. Uh, it's so. Well, why is it important to you to share this message? Share this message message to the world. But was it important to me? Why is it important to you? Oh, you know, it's important to me because uh, the fact of it is, is that epilepsy seizures can happen to anybody. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, people need to understand uh, what epilepsy and seizures are and just how serious it is. Mm -hmm. And, um, 
they need to know what to do if someone has a seizure, if someone uh, is diagnosed with a seizure, because uh, chances are you know somebody with epilepsy. Chances yes. are you have some a family member, a friend, yes. and well, you know the, they they need you. Yes, <laughs> they there's, need you. There's a there's a number out there. This is, this is a, so one in twenty six will be affected by epilepsy at some point in their life. That's right. That's yes. a huge number, Tiffany. Very huge. 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 Yes. Mm -hmm. So people do know, they need to know what to do. Like this, uh, this uh, epilepsy, like first aid for, for epilepsy. Like yes. some, what do you do with someone to, who's shaking on the ground? How do you, do you just leave that person? In your knowledge, what would you, what, what, what should we do? Someone's out on the, on the ground. Do you just leave that person? Do you put a uh, put a tongue or, or put a spoon in the person's mouth? No, no. <laughs> so and people don't. So many, surprisingly, so many people don't know these things. I I know. I know. But what do We're you do? Still... So you're you, saying no. Yeah. That, so you're saying no. Don't put anything. Don't put a spoon in someone's mouth or any, anything else. And for that matter. Yeah, right. I but know unless not? you want to lose a finger. But we're not. <laughs> well, you know, honestly, you could uh you could hurt the person having the seizure or you could injure yourself. You could lose a finger, you could mm -hmm. injure your fingers or you know. Yeah, but won't so... that person has swallowed his or her tongue? No, that that's a miss right there. A person cannot swallow their tongue. Oh no. Oh, okay. No, they can't swallow their tongue. Hmm. It's attached to our mouth, so uh, it's not yeah, going absolutely anywhere. Right. There, there's no way for the tongue to be to retract and start rolling in like, no. like a, a frog's tongue. No. <laughs> but you're but the thing of, yeah. yeah, but the thing of it is, is uh, we can choke on our saliva. Yes. And then he, you know, so we so, don't want to do that. We want to so turn the you... person on our on their side. Okay, good. Good thought. That's, so that's that saliva awesome. can mm -hmm. roll out. No, for sure. Let gravity take its take its course. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So, what happens if uh, if somebody starts shaking and there and there are objects around that person? You want to remove those objects uh, away from them so that mm -hmm. they don't get hurt. Okay. So, should we try to put something? If you grab something soft, even a pillow put underneath the, the head just so it doesn't bounce back and forth. Would well, be... with them being on their side, sure, you can put something, uh, you know, maybe flat or cushioned underneath their head just oh, yeah. to ensure that they're not, you know, conking their head on the mm -hmm. on a hard surface yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. until the seizure is, you know, subsided or has subsided. Right, right. So have did you ever get any seizures in your sleep? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Oh, what's that like? Fun. Oh, you know, well, um, uh, there have been times where I've waken up uh, with a very bad headache or mm -hmm. my tongue. I've bitten my tongue and that uh, really hurts. Oh, that's, uh, ouch. <laughs> that's, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, it's just. I don't know. I've, I've always uh, waken up and uh, I would ask my husband and say, did I have a seizure? And he'd look at me and he'd be like, and be like, darn it. Mm -hmm. yeah. darn it I had another one. <laughs> There's uh, this uh, one moment that was uh, actually, I was, this is in my teens. Mm. And I, I had a stereo in my bedroom. And that, and I recall I had this, huge uh, tin uh, garbage can a seven up garbage can looks like a, a seven up can but huge <laughs> and i woke up one morning and looked around here was my stereo dangling by the cord the the tin can all crushed crunched up oh and i i had no idea what was going on so i started accusing people in my household what have you done to my bedroom oh no <laughs> yeah. oh, no not knowing that this actually happens, but it's, I, I didn't even know that having a seizure at nighttime was possible. And so I'm assuming that that itself wasn't a seizure. I, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine anyone doing what they had done in, oh, while, I was, while I was sleeping. Because when I went to bed, everything was in good order. Yeah, yeah so, right. So, yeah, so it was just, 
I just just the story that came come came up in my head right now, and I said, like, I I need to share this. Uh, it's fun. I always laugh, and I think to myself, like, seizures are un uninvited guests. They'll show up whenever they want to. Just they'll come knocking, and it's like, oh, what are you doing here? Why are you here? Like, I didn't I didn't invite you. Go away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow, that's, that's a, so that's so true. <laughs> So in your surroundings, who's your greatest uh, supporter? My husband, with oh, yeah. without question, my husband oh, yeah. is my greatest supporter. He wow. um, he has been with me with every hospital stay. Um, he has been me or with me through every seizure, um, with every emotion that I've experienced: sadness, depression, anger, everything. Um, I know it's been really tough with him or to excuse me, tough on him because mm -hmm. um, it's not easy. It's not easy being a caregiver because we experience oh. a lot, you know, mm -hmm. but I have to really give uh, major credit to those who um, are, you know, caring yes. for us. Oh, absolutely. Because And my hat goes off to every caregiver that, that deal with through whether epilepsy or I see my mother is my my father's caregiver who has parkinson's mm -hmm. and you know, i've blessed her soul because she started off with myself when i was and then this long oh yes and with epilepsy oh and she she cared for me and i i, I recall the, the days when that anxiety anxiety was building up i'd wake up and not only was there anxiety it was hallucination mm -hmm. a major I, hallucination i and at four five and six years old my hands would feel like they were getting larger and bigger and it frightened me at six years old and it, it felt heavy oh yeah then my mother would come in just wondering what what was going on because i was crying yeah. and she'd come in and all of a sudden i'd look at her and her head would just as I was looking at her head, would start to swell. Oh my God. Like turning into a monster. Oh, um, oh, I can only imagine how terrible. Oh, and it's, had to be. it was devastating. Oof. But this, I bet. Yeah. But then my, she, what she would do, she would, she would take my hands. She actually, well, no, you can't just take your hands. You, got, you brought my whole, <laughs> my whole body. <laughs> uh, so she brought me to the washroom and she put my hands in a sink with cold, uh, absolutely cold water hope thinking that i was actually dreaming but that wasn't the case sometimes yeah. I'd, I'd get back to normal state but sometimes i wouldn't mm -hmm. yeah so that was uh, my experience actually but uh, however that's uh, going off with my mother then once i got into my teenage years then my grandfather was living with us and he developed alzheimer's oh goodness yes so she dealt with my 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 granddad oh gosh and then my my granddad passed oh i'm so and, sorry yeah well that's uh, that's many years ago <laughs> yeah but uh, but thank you but uh, my granddad passed and all of a sudden my my father develops parkinson and now she's a caregiver for my dad so my oh, she, she's superhero. She is, she's uh, superwoman. Absolutely, she is an angel. Wow. An angel. Wow, definitely. She's, she's gained definitely. her wings time and time over again. Wow, what a beautiful woman she mm -hmm. sounds like. Wow, what a beautiful woman. Oh, for sure, for sure. Wow. She's a, she's, she's my rock. Oh. That's oh, that's so great! I'm so glad that you have her. Mm, yes, oh. okay. we're all blessed because of her. Yeah, mm. we we all need someone like that uh, along our journey. Mm -hmm. We do. No, oh, for sure. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, as when uh, when you grew up, uh, so you are your folks still around? Um, I have my mother and I have my uh, little sister. Oh, yeah. She's a very big supporter of uh, all of that I'm doing right now. Both of oh. them are. So oh, <laughs> that's, that's really good. Yeah. But, uh, so, how many siblings? Well, I have an older brother. Mm -hmm. um, he lives 
in South Dakota. Oh. And uh, my sister is in North Dakota, or excuse me, uh, North Carolina. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Mm. And wow. my mom is far away. She lives about 15 minutes from where we live, so. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah. Huh. Wow. Huh. Mm -hmm. But uh, <laughs> so as we're, uh, we're going through this, um, what, what would you like to leave for the audience? What, what tip or what, what advice would you have for them? The last piece of advice. Definitely, you know, no matter what challenges that you face, we all face challenges along this journey, but always, always, always look for the silver linings. Because, you know, again, that is what, you know, helps us to stay strong, keep our heads up, you know, and just uh, really motivates us, inspires us so that we can inspire others. Just look for the silver linings. Well, for sure. And under understand that there's more out there than for those who have to deal with this the condition there's more out there than epilepsy that's if you right look, if look around and have gratitude gratitude for find what's going to generate a feeling of a sense of fulfillment when you if, with the things that are around you yes and, that's right and for you mentioned early on tiffany about the uh, support mm -hmm. find a support group find that support oh, that yeah. can carry you over in that in the, in the, the tough times mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because i i know that we all deal with tough times at some point we sure do and it's mm -hmm. okay to really uh really let your guard down and let people know if you are you know, hurting or having a tough time or struggling because that we're there for one another. Mm -hmm. You know, we're a community. That's yes. what we do. We support one another. For sure. It's a, and that's, and I've spoken to some folks who, who felt that it wasn't necessary. It wasn't really uh, out there, the support. However, if you really look, there, there's more than one way to, to find the support. You can find the support through a, a group, mm -hmm. a group of folks like, like ourselves, mm -hmm. online. And today with, with social media and the, what we have, it's not like when I grew up. Yeah. Yes. Right. I grew up, there, there was nothing. There were your siblings. There were your, your friends who did yeah. not understand. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. However, I had one friend who stuck by me, didn't matter what was going on. And he, the days that when I was on the, when I was in the mall shaking, people would start say, saying, well, aren't you gonna do something about it? And then he'd look at the people and say, just back away, just let it run its course, it'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Says, how do you know? Says, just trust me. And that's, but, he, and he would never ever walk away from me. That's so awesome. Mm -hmm. That's so awesome. Oh yes, and unfortunately, I've lost contact with this this oh, guy. No. Yes, I hope you but, find him. Mm -hmm. But I've, but I think about him a lot because he was a, he was a life receiver for me. He was my best friend for so many years. That's so awesome. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, these are. Uh, find uh, find a, something that's going to uplift you and keep you and keep you going in your your time of hardship. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, you know, even you know, um, reach out and just again, as you said, reach out for support groups. Even just you know, uh, as you said, uh, really uh, pass along some inspirational quotes, mm -hmm. you know, tap into some inspirational quotes, uh, absorb them for yourself right. to lift you up. And this is what I do too. If you look on my um, Instagram page, you'll just see all through just inspirational quotes and attached are little tidbits of uh, me talking about um, my journey and uh, supportive uh uh, things that I can share to give to you. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. 
<laughs> Great. <laughs> so it's so you so you got you got your work out there. So I do. Oh, yeah, that's that's just amazing. Mm -hmm. How do uh, so now that you mentioned that, as we're wrapping things up here, uh, how can people uh, how can people see you? Where where can they get in touch with you? Sure. Um, you can, if you'd like to read my blogs, you can visit my blog at tiffanycaros.com. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also find me on Instagram, uh, Tiffany Caros, at Tiffany Caros. Um, you can also find me uh, on my Facebook page, Tiffany Caros Official. And okay. on Twitter, my handle, of course, is Tiffany Caros. <laughs> wow. So yeah. Tiffany Caros for everyone. So it would... Everyone, just look up my name, Tiffany Caros. Yeah. <laughs> You'll find me. Not hard to find. <laughs> yeah. And she's got wonderful work out there. And please, yes. please log into her, her website and find out more about epilepsy through, Tiff, through Tiffany Caros. So, uh, and as for myself, with my work, you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Actually, I've got uh, Pinterest, oh, Tumblr, nice. and LinkedIn. Ah, uh, yes, I'm on LinkedIn as well. All right, so. under the same name. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, great. Huh. And my my last one, but uh, not least, is a uh, Daniel Vincent dot mykajabi dot com. So that's Daniel Vincent dot m y k a j a bi.com okay you find out more of my material courses uh, membership programs oh great yes. that sounds awesome for sure so once again tiffany thank you so much for for spending this whole hour this whole 60 minutes online and to make it to provide this awareness for everyone around the world so we'll be sharing this with everyone as uh, yeah as far as we can go so, well thank you right. okay <laughs> so you're very welcome and, I, and it, it's my my heart i, I really i talking about gratitude i'm really grateful that you were here with me thanks again and we shall see each other at uh, soon yes that'd be great i look forward to it thanks.